Welcome to episode 226 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host, and today we're going to dive way, way, way deep into the big question of how you can care for everyone at the same time. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. As I've come along in my leadership and business career, it's been, um, I guess, from leadership, you kind of start to learn leadership skills when you're younger, but I'm going to just cut it off. I'm going to cut off the leadership experience at the beginning of my business experience. And it's like, I'm about 20 years in just, I started my first business just after I got married. So we're going to say, we're going to say, go with the 20 year mark. So in 20 years, I'm going to talk about like how I have learned to care for everyone all at once, okay? And it's a very, very, I think it's an important insight. And if you're in leadership, growing in leadership, running an organization, running a team, even leading a family, or even leading yourself, doesn't apply as much to just leading yourself, but more than one person, <laughs> we'll go with that. How do you care for everyone at, all the all, at the same time? How do you do that? How do you wrap your arms around the whole group and say, I'm gonna care for all of you? And um, my first company, Image Auto, our mission, vision, values, we kind of summed it all up and called it provision, provision for life. And basically saying, it is my job as the CEO or owner or leader to provide as much opportunity for as many people as possible all the time. That's what my focus should be, right? I don't think in business you ever win by saying, how can I get ahead as the leader or the owner? That never works long term might work for a little bit for you, but it certainly won't work for everybody else. So I would suggest shifting your thinking to how can I create the most amount of opportunity for the largest amount of people being the most sustainable and like, I'm not gonna put my morals or my judgments over you. I'm just gonna say, I think that's the best way to go because I think the human centric way is the best way to go because I think in the end, businesses are run by people and when people unite together to care about one another, they actually do a lot better at whatever the business is supposed to be doing. And they're actually more likely to do that and work together and come together and be motivated to do it when they believe they are working toward more opportunity for themselves and the people around them. So to bring all of that back, I said, it's my responsibility to provide the most amount of opportunity for the most amount of people. And establishing that as my filter, establishing that at the top, saying like, when I make decisions, when I say yes to things, when I say no to things, when I change my mind on things, when I get into partnerships with other vendors or people that would serve my company, when I take on clients and agree to work with them, because all clients are not good for your business. You know this if you're in business, but I wanna remind you, all clients are not good for your business. There are clients, maybe even great paying clients, that actually will destroy your business because they're not the right fit and they don't care about your people and they drain your people and they destroy that mentality of providing opportunity for your people because no one feels like they're having opportunity provided for them when they're being berated or beaten down or not enjoying at all what they do. So that's what I'm doing to set the table. The point of the podcast, right? How do you care for the most amount of, how do you care for everyone at the same time? And I'm going to go back to a quote that Steve Jobs said, and granted, I do not take leadership cues from Steve Jobs. I think that he got a lot done technologically speaking and that, you know, he built an amazing company with products that I use all the time. But from a leadership standpoint, certainly not my style, certainly not signing off on the Jobs method, but he did say something that is true. And he says, you can, you can keep some, all the people happy, some of the, make all the people happy some of the time can make some of the people happy all the time, but you can never make all the people happy all the time. And that is kind of a, um, a little bit of a foundational principle for my thinking around how can you care for everyone at once. And the reality is you can intend to care for everyone at once, but once you get to several people, it's impossible that you, you would actually have them feel cared for all at once, all at the same time, all the time. It's impossible for you to have all the people feel cared for all at the same time, all of the time, right? So I'm using very inclusive language in the saying, can everyone always feel cared for? And the answer to that, I fully believe is no. So if that is the case and they can't all feel cared for all of the time, that kind of resorts back to my first thought about my, my, 
my um, call and my obligation as a leader to provide the most amount of opportunity for the most amount of people all of the time. I have a heart for people. I want everybody to be okay, right? I wear my heart on my sleeve. I put my cards on the table, which makes me a terrible card player. But at the very least, I want people to feel like I'm honest with them. I want people to feel like I do care about them as a person, have their best interest at heart. And sometimes in business, that means you have to take a direction and you have to make a decision. And when you do that, you are naturally going to um, kind of come into friction with the way other people think it should be done or their interpretation of your intentions. And that might mean that some people move and take a step away from you. And in the end, making decisions is about actually saying yes to certain things, no to certain things. And if you have the best of intentions, that means you're thinking, how can I provide the most amount of opportunity for the most amount of people? How can I try to care for everyone, have an open heart, and be able to reconcile the fact that sometimes people don't feel cared for? And for me, reconciling those thoughts are very hard because I want everybody to be okay all the time. But what I've also learned is that when you make wanting everybody to be okay all of the time, your North Star and your guiding light and the thing that dictates your actions, you're actually going to care for a lot less people because you become a totally impotent leader, right? You can no longer be effective at leading people when you are constantly changing your mentality and your direction and your decisions and backtracking because you need everybody to feel okay with your decision. It's just not realistic. Granted, the goal is I want 100% of the people to understand my intentions are great for them. I want 100% of the people to understand that I'm fighting to create more opportunity. And first, before opportunity, security. Let's back up on that for a second. Before there's opportunity, you need to feel solid and secure where you are. And in a day and age when there's a lot of financial instability, political instability, social instability, feeling stable is actually not... Um, a, a table stake. It is not. It is not an assumed thing anymore. Feeling stable and secure is actually something that um, I think people take for granted less than they ever have. So, once we feel we can help people feel stable and secure, then we can help them look forward and see that hey, there's more opportunity for you here. So, if you're the kind of person that needs everyone to be happy, I struggle with that. I'm just going to raise my hand and admit it that I struggle with that. But I've realized the more I realize that doing that and try to make everybody happy is actually not serving everybody well, because now I'm at the whim of, you know, different people's opinions all the time dictating my actions. Once I realize that, I realize like, oh, okay, it's easier for me to make decisions based on principle, based on my best judgment, and based on the fact that I know my intention for everyone that I'm leading is good. My intention is to give them security and opportunity. My intention is that they feel cared for. And sometimes your intention is all you have to go on. Now, you know, best intentions don't always get results. So I'm not saying like make your intentions your guide. Not true. Don't do that. That's not what Paul is saying. But I am saying sometimes you do have to like believe that your intentions are honest and pure and be able to take the friction that comes with making a decision. Even when you know some of the friction coming is not good for the person giving you the friction. Even when you know that, because maybe you have a broader perspective on things and it's not like if you have a GoPro, you realize like this is normal and then wide angle zooms out and then ultra wide, you can see like 180 degrees. And look, the truth is the longer you're in business, the longer you study leadership and have mentors, you're gonna see it from a wider angle than a lot of people can see it. And that's okay. So how do you care for all the people all the time? I'm saying that is impossible, but that doesn't mean you can't try. And that doesn't mean it's not worth pursuing. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me here today. I hope you try to care for every single person in your path this week. I will see you next week. We came to fight.